if you were able, would you please stand? Burlington, as we know it today, is rich in historical and modern traditions of many First Nations and the Métis. From the Anishinaabe, the Mohawk, the Neutrals, the Ojibwe, and the Seneca, our lands surrounding Lake Ontario are steeped in Indigenous history. Acknowledging the land we gather on allows us to embrace and meet our obligations to the calls for action under the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. We honor with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the indigenous people with whom the Upper Canada Treaties were signed and our responsibility as treaty members. We also honor the heritage of the Métis. The territory wherein our church resides is mutually covered by the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant between the Iroquois Confederacy, the Ojibwe, and other nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. May our actions be guided by our commitment to reconciliation. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gives us birth, our light, and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for this gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your holy, your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the Lord, word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. 
He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 85 responsively. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sins. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people. To his faithful. To those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground. And righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good. And the right hand will yield his increase. Righteousness will go before him. <clears throat> Our second reading is from um, Second Peter. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be destroyed with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and destroyed, and the elements will melt with fire, but in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and, with, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Word of God, word of life. Oh, <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the whole Judean region and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, 
but He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel reading that I just read from Mark today is one of those classic Advent pieces. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness. The story of John the Baptizer preparing the world for the ministry of Jesus. And sure, at times when we read this reading, we get distracted by John's clothing. Camel's hair would not be good in here today, I think. (laughs) and sometimes we get distracted by his diet i'm not really sure i want to eat locusts the wild honey is okay but but not the locusts but it's clear that what we're to focus on is what his job is and whenever i read this reading i think of a particular section on the 401 bear with me It's just a little section that I marvel at every time I drive through it. Because quite frankly, most of the 401 is boring, unless you're stuck in traffic and then it's frustrating and boring. But there's one section where in order to make the highway go through, they had to blast through some serious rock. And every time I go through that section, I think of this reading, and every time I read this reading, I think of that section of the highway. And sure, there are more serious sections of roadway where they've had to blow through things in order to make the road go. But maybe it's just that it's that little bit that makes me begin to wonder, why not just go over it? Why not just turn it a little? Did we really have to destroy all that rock in order to get through it? Thank God I'm not an expert in road construction, and I will defer those decisions to those experts. But I do know this, blowing through that rock definitely makes my path easier. Driving on that section of the 401, I don't have to wait behind a truck that's struggling up over that little knoll that would otherwise be there. It is probably so simple and small a section of the highway that I think that few of us even remember that it's there until we're there. Now, I wish that all of my paths in life were that easy. Not that I want to be the Messiah, though, and hung on the cross and, you know. But having some nice, easy, simple, straight paths would be good wouldn't it? Having someone to go before us who could lay all of the groundwork for what we need to do so we could come in and easily do what is set before us. That, that to me sounds like heaven on earth actually if somebody does all of the hard work and I just show up at the end. But our life, at least my life, isn't like that. There are ups and downs. There are physically and emotionally difficult journeys to make. There are times that I don't even know where the journey is headed, let alone to figure out if someone has a map or if we turned on the GPS before losing signal. There are at times in our lives some really important decisions to be made. And sometimes simple ones get caught up in the midst of that. And everything becomes so much more complex than it needs to be. So if only we had someone like John who could go before us to help make the pathways of life a little simpler, to prepare the way for us. Oh, there are days that I think that would be nice, at least for those more difficult moments. 
Here's the reality, though. There are people who have gone before me and made my life easier. One was the perpetual deacon in my home parish. A steel worker by day and parish deacon on nights and weekends. One was a lovely woman in Chelsea, Ontario, who modeled a combination of gentleness and determination that only a small town woman could have. Trust me, she was determined when she wanted to be. Another was my father. Moving countries, adjusting to and adapting to new realities in a new land that he never could have predicted. Now I'm sure that each of these people would bristle at even the slightest comparison that I've made between them and John the Baptizer, for none of them, I think, thought they had such an exalted role in their life. But each of them, and too many of them to name, if I tried to name everyone, have impacted my life in such a way that life is easier today because of the work they did in the world before me. God's path is easy because as a community, we are tasked at making the world better for others. We are to clear the big rocks out of the way for others to be able to live the lives and to be the people that God has called them to be. And as we are busy doing that work, other people are doing that work for us. That is the strength of coming together and being a community. So, who has made your path in life easier? And whose path in life are you making easier? For in doing so, in making the past easier for others, we are issuing in a new era again for Jesus to be born into the world. An easier path for God to touch the lives of others. And for that work, we give thanks. Amen.
church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. In our cycles of prayer today, we pray for all our members, particularly Irene and Bob Allen, Arlene Allen, Sandra and Ingo Anderson, Cecilia and Martin Apavo, for our pastor Colin, for our bishops, Susan Bell, Colin Johnson, Michael Price. For our primate Linda and our national bishop Susan, in the Diocese of Niagara, St. Luke, Smithville, in the Eastern Synod, St. Luke's Evangelical Lutheran Church, Kitchener, in the Anglican Communion, the Church of Pakistan, United, and in the Lutheran World Federation, the Lutheran Church of Senegal. Teach your church to be bold in revealing your good news in word and in deed, merciful God. Prayer. Heal the earth where it belongs, where it longs for renewal. Bring wholeness to earth and all its create creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Turn the hearts of the nations toward righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation between all political leaders. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Surround all who are grieving, all who know depression or anxiety or all who feel lonely, hurt, or forgotten, especially those listed on the slide. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give hope to those seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people awaiting new births, diagnosis, or treatments. Watch with those who keep bedside vigil. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past and the anticipation of saints yet to be born. May they inspire us to live with faith. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these in all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Amen.
siblings, sisters, and brothers, the peace of Christ be with you always. Please show a sign of Christ's peace. God, our strength, we are nothing without you. Receive all we offer you this day as you sustain us with your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in the fullness of time came among us in our flesh and opened to us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge this world that we without shame or fear may rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
give thanks to You, Lord our God, for in the goodness and love You have made, us, made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be Your people, in Your Word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus, Your Son. For in these last days You sent Him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Him You have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before You. In Him You have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night He was handed over to suffering and death, a death He freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when He had given thanks to You, He broke it and gave it to His disciples and said, Take and eat this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happier are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
you were able, would you please stand up? Faithful God, we thank you for feeding us with this heavenly banquet. Help us always to hear the prophet's call to turn our hearts to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. I know that time of standing is short, but there is no way to sing the doxology and sit. Right? Uh, so a reminder to please do check your emails um, for the, the weekly email that comes out with all of the uh, recurring announcements in it. If you do not receive those emails because you don't have an email address, we are looking at a way of providing a print copy. Uh, it's just the time to take it from the format it's in as an email and print it in the way that you could actually read it and gain anything from it, uh, we need to work out those details yet. Uh, downstairs, there is a mitten tree on our lower level that is actually getting quite full. Um, and, uh, but if you do have mittens and gloves for those in need, then please do, uh, do bring those uh, in, and, uh, and we will get them out to... Uh, a worthy organization over the next couple of weeks. Uh, a reminder that our, we're supporting uh, all of the Christmas families that we've supported as two congregations in the past. We've, we're supporting them all combined this year with one program. So, so really, we do need your uh, generous donations for the Christmas families. Please do uh, give if you can so that we can make people's Christmas time a little bit easier. A reminder that our Christmas Eve services will have uh, Advent 4 at, uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, and then Christmas Eve will have 5.30 and 7.30. That'll be a long day, um, but it'll be a fun day, right? If, uh, if you didn't like coming to church, then, you know, you shouldn't be here, right? <laughs> So if you're here, you should be here uh, for, uh, for a lot of that. And then Christmas Day, uh, again at 10 a.m. Uh, so please do join us for that. A reminder to come back uh, next week for our service. A Andrew and I are fighting over control at the moment uh, of the slides. And so, Andrew, can you get the next one for me and I won't do it? Uh, a reminder that there is a time of, of coffee hour after the worship today. Um, I'm going to, rather than go into the rest of the announcements, I'm going to jump. That's part of having the tablet here, is I can do that and reorder things. So if I can get Ross and Peter to come forward, please, both of you. So this year, Ross and Peter were uh, appointed by our, our bishop. There we go. <laughs> we're appointed by our, our bishop to the Order of Niagara. I'm wondering if I can get all of the other recipients of the Order of Niagara to come up and join me, please, as we do this. Yeah. 
name, see if you can get the envelope for me. If I can get some on my left, because Ben's going to take pictures and we don't want to look too lopsided, Rick? John? Can you come over this way? There we go. And if you guys can turn around, Ben's going to take a couple of photos. Yep. Yeah! Pretend you like us. <laughs> Okay, so if I can get uh, Ross and Peter back there, you guys stay up here with me. Okay, so for those of you who have not been able to experience the joy of an order of Niagara service at the cathedral, uh, the dean of the diocese of Niagara reads out the citation, the reason why uh, people are being honored, the work that they've done. And we've actually got the video from the service where, uh, where Ross was able to be there and Peter was sick. So just listen and watch. And finally, two further bishop appointees, Peter Carr and Ross Noble. Peter, who unfortunately could be, not be with us this evening, and Ross, are celebrated today in recognition of their outstanding leadership, which they have provided to the amalgamation process between St. Elizabeth's and Holy Cross Lutherans since 2018. Working with Canon Kristen Perkins, they have faithfully shepherded the St. Elizabeth's congregation through this discernment and all the town hall meetings, negotiations, and care that this has entailed. Through the whole process, Ross and Peter hold a vision for the new future for God's mission in South Burlington, listened deeply, problem-solved, developed wells of patience beyond what they could have imagined, and continually reflected and acted on a deep sense of God's calling. In addition to this, for many years, both Peter and Ross have made significant contributions to the life of St. Elizabeth through various worship and governance roles, social activities, outre and outreach initiatives. Through the amalgamation, the pandemic, and in ordinary times too, both men have given exemplary service to their faith community. So uh, the way the, the applause is supposed to work at the uh, Order of Niagara services, it's all until the end. Um, but people clapped anyway when they weren't supposed to. Ross was really, um, really excited that he got a standing ovation <laughs> <laughs> when no one else did. So you can claim part of that as yours, Peter. So, so I'll read the certificate just so that you know what it says on it because... Uh, uh, not a lot of people see these. So, Order of Niagara. We, Susan, by divine permission, Bishop of Niagara, do admit to the Order of Niagara, Peter Carr, in grateful recognition of service to the church, in witness whereof we have caused our signature to hereto be affixed, dated the 29th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2023, and in the sixth year of consecration, plus Susan Niagara. So there you go, Peter. You're welcome. And... There we go. And, and Ben's right there. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Congratulations.
Thank you. Are there other uh, announcements or celebrations? Ross, did I see a calendar come in? Wonderful. I was hoping that's what it was. Um, I wanted to, uh, we've had an announcement uh, in your emails that you're, sh that you're checking. Uh, in it, there's a, uh, an image of a calendar. And this is a calendar that Dave Archibald, who uh, was the husband of our late Reverend Gene Archibald at St. Elizabeth's, and he's a photographer, something he's taken up in his retirement. And so he creates these calendars each year, and one of the things that he's doing is he's dedicating this to uh, the work that uh, Gene had started, uh, uh, I guess, a few years before uh, she passed, which was in 2018. Uh, and this was to help refugee families um, during her time at uh, St. James in uh, Dundas. So anyway, so uh, I said to uh, uh, Jenny, who is Jean's um, niece that used to be at uh, St. Elizabeth's, that I would uh, show these and if anybody, opa. Um, <laughs> and uh, so if, we, uh, if you want one of these, please come see me after the service. And uh, it's $25, and I will be seeing uh, Jenny actually tomorrow, and she'll be giving me some calendars that have already been ordered. So uh, I will bring those back here. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Are there other announcements this morning? John's got one. Uh, this, uh, this past week I turned 50, and uh, oh. they had... Happy yeah, birthday. Thank you. But uh, a little bit more. I went out with my sister to the movies. I came back, and they had a surprise party planned for me. Wonderful. And my sister's birthday was the day after, and we had cake and ice cream for her birthday, too. So that was fun. <laughs> I did not know. Um, at the end of every service, we have the uh, Walker Brigade leave down <laughs> the, the center aisle. And uh, maybe you've noticed over the last seven or eight weeks, we've been one short. Yes. All right. Yeah. Ron De Silva has been in the hospital in rehab for a long time. I've missed him. I'm sure you have but not as much as Loretta and Ron miss you. Yes. I just wanted to say, I hope we all continue to remember them in our prayers and hope for his, he's recovering, but he's not quite there yet. Yep. Thank you. Just a reminder, that uh, the children have been, and some adults, have been working very hard, and we're going to have our nativity play next week. We're going to do it um, during the 10 o'clock service, but I'd like all participants, all the children and, and uh, adults that are going to be in it, to be here around 9 o'clock, and hopefully we can um, just get a quick run through just to show them their places. Um, and then we'll get their costumes on afterwards. So if we can meet up here around 9 o'clock next week. And I should warn you, it's as hard on me as it <laughs> is on you. I'm not a morning person, as you already know. Eh? Probably harder. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> Patty's got an announcement. Good Food Box is this coming Thursday. If you want to put in an order, please do. If you want to come and help, we could use you, uh, especially if you can take orders. Uh, well, 
direction. <laughs> if Patty can tell you where to go, please show up. <laughs> Any other? Okay, so. Right. Uh, just a brief announcement. I, I know that uh, Debbie put a, uh, a notice in, in our announcements, but uh, I just wanted to uh, pass on to everybody uh, my personal thanks for all of your help during the uh, bazaar and the silent auction. And to uh, just reiter reiterate what uh, Debbie said, uh, we were just a little bit, a little bit short of $10,000 in, in our efforts. So thank you all very much. So we, we do know of one birthday that's coming up this week, right? We do. Valentin's birthday is on the 13th. So if we can get... It also came with, where did it go? Oh, it came with the, what? There he is, he's right, he's right side up. It's a chili pepper for the chili half marathon. Right? Now, uh, can you hold this? I can hold that for you. <laughs> See, she's good at telling people where to go and what to do. Yeah. <laughs> we also have for you, a medal because you are just so brave and so great. So there's a medal. Now, now, now it's time for me to embarrass other people. <laughs> because you need one too. <laughs> Frosting in his favorite colors out in the narthex to have with coffee. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Ben, can you get a picture with George, Pedro, Claudia? Ben will take pictures. Okay. Okay? Yes. 
Thank you. <laughs> I just want to say in, in the name of our family, thank you. Um, well, we had some words here, and I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. I'll, I'll try to make it fast. Uh, where is it? <laughs> Take all the time you need, George. We're not right. <laughs> well, seriously, we're not. Who, who's Valentin? He's a very brave boy. That's why he got a medal. <laughs> we say this all the time, and we are very proud of him. Of him, but to understand the, this courage a little more, a little more, I need to tell Valent I need to tell you Valentin's story. He was born in December 2013. I brought a lot of joy to the whole family. A happy boy who laughed all the time, especially when he was, and he, especially when he is actually with his brother Pedro. <laughs> he had many friends and loved to help. He played fo uh, soccer, basketball, judo, loved printing and mathematics, a, hap a happy child. In January 2022, we started investigating, investigating strabismus. Uh, and in February, he was diagnosed with a brain cancer. During 2022, Valentin committed himself very, very responsibly to a sugar-free, lactose-free, and white flour-free diet. Wow. Even though he saw all the children eating sweets and sweets, <laughs> he knew that it did not help their health and could increase inflammation. He remained stable throughout 2022. In January 23, the first changes came to his life. He lost his balance and he felt more tired, but he remained happy and adapted to the new symptom. We moved to Canada on January 30th, 2023. Despite the radical change in our lives, Valentin remained committed, committed, committed to the new family moment. On February, February 2nd, the first strong systems appeared, and we went to the hospital where Valentin remained for 45 days between sick kids and Blueview hospitals. Once again, he adapted to the situation, made friends, went to school with his art and his smile. He conquered and left his mark. In April, he returned to school, and once again, he made more friends. He underwent physiotherapy to recover from the limitation of radio, radiation therapy. And at the end of August, he, re, he returned to Sick Kids, where he, was, where he stayed another 40, 43 days. So he lost his mother movements, breath, breath, uh, breathing uh, difficulties, and swallowing also stopped. But Valentin never lost his the spark in his eyes, he showed everyone that he continued to believe. For some time, for some time he, for some time the look was the way we communicate, his look was the way we communicated, uh, and little boy like this, warrior, organized his body, and today he's already recovering several losses. The process is low and difficult, but for him, it's done with a smile and a lot of joy. He, he, he vibrates every step, every exercise he advances, every time he manages to swallow. To swallow. He dreams about every food he <laughs> loves, especially sushi. <laughs> and when he eats, when he, when he eats again, he wants a very large quantity <laughs> Every day he dreams bigger. Every day he shows us a victory. Every day he moves, moves us with a lot of faith in God. Every day he impresses us with his lucidity. Every day we share a pure and true love that can do anything. 
And today we are here to celebrate this 10 years Valentin's, of Valentin's life, which, which is a gift that God entrusted us. To us parents, to Pedro, to his family, and to all his friends who pray for him, that included you, includes you, so that he continues to be an inspiration of faith in God and Jesus. We end our message with Valentin's words sent by message. Have you ever thought that our life is perfect? I have a father and I have a mother, a family, friends, all my body parts. We have the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, and the animals. Imagine if we had nothing. Crazy, right? These things in life so insignificant but so important. That was November 20th, 23. Now, one message from November 22nd. He was inspired, actually. <laughs> Don't let fear reach you. Be stronger, courageous, fearless, and warrior. Then everything will be better. You are special. And finally, for on December 8th, Mom, I already told you that I am so grateful Thank you very much. Thank you very much for organizing this also. It was so, we're so grateful. Thank you, Patty. So we have uh, three prayer shawls to bless this morning. Um, um, where did Patty get off to now? Um, there, there she is, Patty. Uh, so you've, you've given me the names. Am I able to make the names public or should I not? Uh, wonderful, thank you. Sometimes I get these prayer shawls from Patty on a Sunday morning and, and I'm never sure if if I'm supposed to say who they're for or not. So, uh, one of them is for Ron, actually, uh, so that we can make sure that, that Ron has, uh, has something tangible from us as much as he has our prayers. And uh, the other two are for Dakota and Mackenzie. And so, we hold um, all three of them in our prayers. Let us pray. Loving God, when you came into the world through Jesus, your Son, we again got to experience the gentleness of your touch, the warmth of your embrace, and your holy gift of healing. We ask your blessing upon these shawls for Ron and Dakota and Mackenzie. May they know those same things the gentleness of your touch, the warmth of your embrace, your gift of healing. And may they know that they are always surrounded by our prayers. Amen. If you would please stand for the blessing. The God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope. And the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen.
in peace. Keep awake. I thank you all for joining us today. It's a pleasure to see all of you. Ron, Loretta, Joan, Diane, Irene. It's great to see you all there. Who do we else have? We have Mitch, Richard. Thank you for all for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again soon. It's great to have you online. And uh, we will see you again next week. Take care. Sorry, Gail, I didn't see you there. And Gail, good to see you as well. I'll let you guys now have your own coffee hour. Take care. You as well, thank you.